So today we are opening up the Diamond Select Wave of Lord of the Rings figures, which each figure includes a piece to build your own Sauron figure. They were released in three series. The first one had Gimli and Legolas, the second one had Frodo and the Ringwraith, and the third one had the Aragorn and Moria Orc. So I'll tell you right now that I'm a little worried about these figures. I can already tell that this Aragorn doesn't look a thing like Viggo Mortensen. The other ones don't look too bad, but we're going to have to open them up and see if maybe they are worthwhile or maybe I should just toss them back into the fires and not do them.
And here we have Wave 1, the Build a Sauron Wave from the Diamond Select line of Lord of the Rings figures. Honestly, I'm kind of meh about it. The sculpts are kind of a mixed bag as far as the faces go. Aragorn looks nothing like Viggo Mortensen. Gimli looks pretty close. Frodo is probably the best. And the Legolas figure looks more like 40-year-old Orlando Bloom than 19-year-old Orlando Bloom. He also weirdly doesn't come with the swords that he would have on his back, even though there are space for them. I'm guessing due to some backlash from customers, they decided to include them with the Gollum figure that's coming out pretty soon. That also comes with a couple of Gimli's axes and somebody else's accessory too. So they're coming, but you've got to buy a whole nother figure for it, which, I mean, most people will probably buy Gollum anyway. It's still kind of a weird choice. I'm glad they did throw those... Uh, accessories in down the line but I know it's still kind of odd why not just have included them to begin with and some of the accessory choices are kind of weird at least for Aragorn he's got stuff from all three of the movies he's got the torch from Fellowship of the Ring his gauntlets are Boromir's after he takes them from his body when Boromir is killed and then he's also got the sword he gets at the end for Return of the King so it's kind of odd with the gauntlets don't really make him a definite fellowship of the ring figure he's not really a definite two towers or a return of the king figure especially with that face sculpt so he's just kind of weird overall it also feels like you're getting a lot fewer accessories than you did with say the old toy biz lines where it seemed like you would get a lot more for your buck like Frodo would come with a whole other boat for some of them or like a background that had like a changing display so it feels like you're getting less for like double the money but you know that's inflation for you the worst one out of all these however is this ring wraith figure soft goods is just the right way to go for this figure that is mostly cloaks and robes unfortunately with the way this one was made he looks ridiculous unless his arms are just down at his side or maybe that far up you put him out here he looks silly he also comes with two scabbards that are not attached to him. You have to apparently go out, buy black thread or whatever color you want to use for it and put them on them yourself. But with how tight and hard this black plastic cloak is that's on him, it's even more of a hassle than kind of a headache. So I'm really not sure why they didn't just do that themselves. Seems kind of lazy. Now, if the Ring Wraith is the worst, then this Moria Orc is hands down the best figure. It's honestly pretty fantastic and is my favorite out of all these. He looks great. He's got some great posability. The two different head sculpts is nice, even though he's supposed to have come with three. I guess they changed that somewhere down the line. So if you see any product uh, photos that have him with three, he's only got two. The helmeted one and the one without a helmet. But, like I said, he's got great posability. He comes with a couple of good weapons. He looks great. Paint job is great. The sculpt on his face is pretty darn good. And, yeah, he looks fantastic. He is, hands down, my favorite out of all of these figures. And, I'm honestly, he's the one I'm glad I got. I kind of want to get another one just to have a pair of them with each of the different faces and have them just kind of sit next to each other. It's, it's a fantastic figure. Like, I wish all of them had the same quality that this one had. Now, much like Marvel Legends Hasbro figures, you get a piece to build Sauron with each one of these figures. And overall, he's pretty solid. He towers above the rest of them. He's not too difficult to put together. He is a little hard to get to stand. I had to put a couple of stands on his feet in order to get him to stay upright. The plastic made to use his club is kind of cheap, and mine was a little warped, unfortunately. But overall, he's got some good details. There's lots of great little bits in his armor. He's got the Ring of Power on his right hand. So next to the Moria Orc, the Sauron is probably my favorite out of the bunch. He's got great detail, great posability. Once you can figure out how to get him to stand without falling over and knocking down everything else on the shelf, then he's a solid figure. So overall, just my experience with Diamond Select is they tend to have some pretty tight joints that make it a little difficult to move, and I was honestly terrified I was going to snap somebody's arm or leg or head off, and that's been my experience with some of the other lines too. And then like Sauron's Club, a few of the accessories were kind of the cheaper plastic, so they came a little warped, like Legolas's arrows and a couple of the swords, so you may have to do some running under warm water and then running on a cold water once you get them into the shape you want them to do. 
So overall, is this line worth supporting? I honestly don't see them going to the same lengths or amounts that Toy Biz made. They made tons of characters from all three of the movies. And with the price point of these figures and the prices of all figures going up, I just don't know if they're going to get to even that high of numbers. Honestly, I'll be surprised if they even get to the full fellowship. Now, if they do manage to get to the full fellowship, then I may pick them all up. But honestly, in my opinion, the old Toy Biz line is better. They had lots of good articulation, decent facial sculpts, some of them better than others, much like these ones that are on the table. And they just had tons of figures and cave trolls, tree beard. It just it, almost everybody from the movie, it felt like. So I just don't see Diamond Select getting that extent of a wave. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Quick interjection. I picked up a couple of the Toy Biz Lord of the Rings figures this weekend at Toy Lanta, and after re-examining those and noticing some flaws that I had probably overlooked due to nostalgia, a lot of them do suffer from the play features that I had forgotten about, the buns on the back or the squeeze in the leg variety. I do still think Toy Biz is a little bit better just because of the sheer quantity, and I just don't see Diamond Select ever getting up to those same numbers. but. I have softened to them a little bit more and kind of enjoy them now taking a second look at them. And the price of them really hasn't gone up that much on the secondhand market, so your time might be better spent tracking down those old figures, which is an extensive library of them, and paying for those instead. So coming up next time on my build video, I have what looks to be a seemingly random bag of pieces. If you want to know what they built, you're going to have to tune in next time. So until then, stay safe, happy hunting.